Hello and welcome to today's episode of Wilderness TV. I'm Lewis Hendry from Guideline and today we're on the stunning River Lynn. Now this is one of my absolute favourite rivers and it's in a hidden gem here within the, the southwest region. Now what's special about this river is it's got a very healthy population of wild fish. There's no stocking influence, it's got brown trout, it's got sea trout and it has salmon. So the techniques that we're going to cover today is two nymphs, so some people may refer to that as Euro nymphing or double nymph. We're going to use dry fly and nymph, so that's, that's duo or New Zealand style. And lastly, we might even try a streamer through the pools just to see if we can tempt a salmon, a big trout or a sea trout. We were recently asked by one of our audience if we could run through our leader setup for nymphing, so I'm going to do exactly that before we get going. For those of you new to nymph fishing or looking to improve your leader setup for, for Euro nymphing, I would look no further than this stuff. In my opinion, this is as good as it gets. This is the Stren UV Clear Blue line and it's 14 pounds. I have got 17 pounds in my hands as well, but the lighter diameter for me is a go, is, is, is a winner. Um, it's very supple and it's also very slick. So it shoots through the rod rings very easy, but it's also very sensitive in your hands and it doesn't coil up. So for me, this is a must. We'll go through to showing you the setup in a minute, but the other thing to bear in mind is this stuff here, Miracle Braid. It can be a little bit difficult to get hold of, but for me, this is the ultimate in indicator material. You can use bicolored uh, and it's personal preference. Whatever takes your fancy, you should be using and what you're confident with. But for me, this is what I use. So that's the indicator and the line that I'm using. Now we're gonna show you my setup. So to keep things simple, my setup consists of a two weight fly line, 20 foot of stren, and then attached to the end of the stren, in between the stren and the indicator, I have a bit of fluorocarbon. I'd suggest about nine pounds, and that's about three to four foot in length. And that's just gonna add a bit more stealth to your, your setup in order so that the fish doesn't see this thicker line. Then our indicator, whatever you choose to use, whatever is your preference, and then our, our fly setup. As far as the tippet's concerned, from my indicator to my dropper, I would usually fish somewhere within the region of 80 centimeters and a meter. And from there, we'll then attach my second fly at around about 50, 50 centimeters. So as you can see, the sun's out, but we've actually had quite a lot of rain recently. And with this, the river's come up a little bit than its usual summer levels, and it's holding a little bit of color. So that's enough with the technical stuff, let's get fishing. The River Lynn is an amazing stretch of freestone river. The river is formed as the Upper Lynn, where two minor tributaries, Orr Water and Badgeworthy Water, meet at Malmesmead. The river flows over seven miles and falls over 1,200 feet and finally meets the West Lynn and flows into the Bristol Channel at Lynmouth. The river has an array of characteristics, with a series of cascading waterfalls, deep pools, long smooth glides and plenty of pocket water. If you are considering a visit to the Lynn for a day's fishing, please bear in mind that this is a challenging river to wade. Its fast flowing and bold recomposition can make wading hazardous, and we would strongly suggest that this is for the advanced angler. Guided trips to the Lynn and across the southwest can be booked here at Wilderness TV. Just drop us an email at info at wildernesstv.com. So one of the signatures of this river is the colour of the fish. I mean they really are something special. Oh, the line's got wrapped around him, let me just very quickly sort him out. That classic eye shadow around the cheek there, and you've got these big red adipose fins on the top here. But absolutely stunning looking fish and red marks down the tail as well. It's absolutely gorgeous.
the best techniques for fishing these waters are dry fly fishing. Dry fly and nymph, which can be duo or New Zealand style, single or double nymph, also known as Euro nymphing, and streamer fishing. Stunning markings on these fish. This is the great thing about a nymphing setup is it just does it doesn't have to be dedicated to nymphing. You can use a variety of different methods on it. You could fish a dry fly with a nymph suspended underneath, high sticking, keeping everything off the water, and actually use that technique to be able to lift the dry on and off the water, bouncing on and off, imitating an egg laying caddis or something like that, and 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 you'll be very effective. Again, we can stick streamers on the point and also be very effective because instead of having to just strip and draw, we can allow our flies to bump, bump and bounce off the bottom looking like an injured fish or a distressed fish. And just then, first cast, I threw that in. Again, classic water that you would look for for a big fish or a salmon. This river is brilliant for salmon. We've had a bit of rainfall and there's definitely going to be fish within the system. But for those big feroxy type trout that are going to be hungry and looking to pick off salmon par or, or, or smaller trout, this is going to be a great opportunity for the fish to see our flies, but also to get a big streamer with a bit of weight down it deep into the water column and be right on those big fish's nose because they're going to be buried deep to the bottom and only feeding very selectively. So we're going to have a look through through the rest of this pool and just see what happens. Now the fish, that I saw there was your bigger than average stamp of fish for the Lynn. Um, I would have said it was around about two, two and a half pound. Literally came up and turned on it. I just jigged at the same time that he went for it and he missed it and he hasn't come back again. So with streamers, it's usually a first time hit. If you're gonna get that take, it's gonna be an absolute wallop. You're gonna get smashed on the first cast. So we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can prospect through the pool and find something else and see if we can get another take or, or actually hook into a decent fish.
our top nymphing tips would be never take your eye off the indicator. Strike immediately. The quicker you strike, the more fish you'll catch. Get your flies down to the trout. If your fly isn't bumping the riverbed now and then, and especially if you're not losing an occasional nymph to a rock, then you're not doing it right. Minimise slack line. A little slack line in your fly line is plenty. If you can pull all the slack out in a modest raise of a rod tip, you've got all the slack you want. Strike at every sign. No one can really tell the tick of a stone from a light take of a trout. If you strike and there's nothing there, no problem. Just let your flies continue its drift. And lastly, try all the water with any promise. Run your nymph through every riffle and run or pocket that seems even slightly plausible, at least until you figure out where the trout seem to be holding. If you stick only to the most promising spots, you may find that the trout have decided not to. Look at the size of the tail on that thing, how small that fish was. Well, it's not small, but in consideration to the size of the fish, it's got a huge paddle tail on it. So we've just arrived at this stunning bit of water. It's, it's very different looking to the water we fished so far today. It's much more skinny. And a lot of people associate skinny water as wa water not worth fishing. So it's interesting because uh, there are many anglers out there that would walk past water like this thinking it's void of fish and aim for those intentional deep pools. But in actual fact, a lot of fish like to sit in this type of water. It's about one to two foot in depth in most places. Um, and it's perfect for the fish because there's a fast conveyor belt of food coming past offering, offering to themselves. Um, and on top of that, the fish don't have to travel far to get to the surface or to eat food that's directly in front of them subsurface. So in this characteristics of water, what you'll find is the fish are willing to move for the fly. So you could put on a dry fly like we've rigged up here. We've rigged up a dry fly and a nymph. So duo style or New Zealand style if you want to tie to the bend of the dry fly hook. In this case I've chosen the duo just so they get a clean connection with the dry fly. But you wait and see how lethal this will be through here. Now because it's skinny ripply water what we want to do is fish a dry fly that the fish are going to see easily. So what we put on here is a fly called a retirer sedge 
and, and as you can see it's a very bushy bulky fly so it's going to sit very well on the water we're going to see it easily and the fish are going to see the silhouette of the fly easily within the ripple water so that's going to be our perfect choice for now and on the point I have an orange tag again I've talked about this before a brilliant fly for trout and this has just got a very small subtle tag on it with a pheasant tail body and this will be an absolute killer in here now the benefit is is it's going to allow me to prospect through the water and see if the fish want the dry or the nymph so I'm looking for that dry fly to either shoot under the water when the fish intercept the nymph or to see a splashy take at the dry fly so we'll go and see what happens through here now again the other thing that I forgot to mention is that we're going to fish this on our nymphing setup now the added benefit to this is we're fishing just leader so one we have no drag from the fly line on the water or the weight of the fly line landing on the water harshly and spooking the fish but also we can use that high sticking method where we extend our arm out far in order to reach across the current so we can get a truer drift so where our dry fly lands we can allow that dry fly to drift downstream and actually elevate all the line behind it to avoid getting drag and also keep in some ways manipulate the dry to keep it above water instead of it getting sucked under the bike by the current sometimes when the nymph gets in a faster pace flow on top of that something that's really really cool is we can actually just induce the fly with moving the rod tip and animating the fly so we can we can make that dry fly act like an egg laying sedge so it's going to just bounce on top of the surface and we can just bounce it lift off back on the water and it will it will entice the fish to, to want to really come up and hammer that fly. Some people call it stimmy nymphing when, you, when you're fishing with the nymph and the dry fly and you're teasing the fish almost. But well, we're going to have a little play through here and see what happens. I didn't want to do that. I'm pushing that big. Every time I put it near that fish, the fish comes and eats the fly. That's what I was trying not to achieve. It's not a bad sized fish, is it, either? It's not for the river, yeah, it's good. Good fish. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Where did he come from? Absolutely insane. Oh, what a fish. Awesome. What a special fish. Oh, it's a big fish, mate. It's a big fish. Oh, look at that, like a stunning looking fish. <laughs> Look 
Look at that! Look at that! There's a nymph that you ate. A little fellow with a bit of violet in it. Look at that. <laughs> God, that's a special, special fish. Let's give him a drink. Yeah, you can see the biggest giveaway of a sea trout. Do you see the big black tail? And also, it's very flat. If you, the salmon's tail will be forked. You filming with both? Yeah. Alright. It's really important that we get plenty of oxygen back on this fish. Wow, what a day. I really, really cannot get over and I'm kind of speechless about how today's ended up because if you'd said to me at the start of the day that we were going to catch a four pound sea trout, I would have said no chance because at the end of the day, it's not something you see. We've got pretty nice conditions from a, from a being out, outdoors point of view. It's been sunny. Um, there's been some overcast spells. So not great for, for, for the fishing, but the sea trout that I'd found, it, it was actually sat deep in a pool and I was sight nymphing to it and, and, and I'd made numerous casts over it and it, it started to kind of I started to see a bit of interaction on the fly. Every time my fly drifted over it, its fins would just start lifting. And so it was what we call on the fin. So I started to see more, more movement in the body language of the fish. And then the cast before I caught it, he just lifted and looked at the fly, really interested. So I covered him again and just something in my head just clicked and went, right, this is the time. And I just induced the fly just as it got about six inches away from him. And he just lifted and nailed it. And I mean, where can you go in the country where you can sight fish to salmon and sea trout? I just, it's just not unheard of. It's something that you hear about in Iceland. And we are very, very blessed. I mean, look at this place. It's a hidden gem within North, North Devon and within the De Southwest region. It really, really is a special place. And considering the day tickets of £3.50 and £8.50, <laughs> what can I say? It's incredible.